up everyone? Today's video is dedicated to you guys and to the guy who's sitting across from me, Victor. Uh, Victor thought it would be a great opportunity to ask me a whole bunch of questions about Formula One and my experience with Formula One. I typically don't make videos about Formula One because I just find that it's completely separate from what I do on social media and what I do on YouTube and everything else. So I kind of separate the two, but I'm always happy to answer some questions and give you guys an inside look on some of the things I get up to when I'm at these racetracks. Victor has uh, put together some really interesting questions, so hopefully <laughs> hopefully this is useful. What's up, Victor? So first things first, I want to kind of know what's your history with Formula One? Yeah, so I mean, my history is an unusual one because I didn't grow up watching Formula One races. I always, you know, had... Um, some sort of like distant relationship with the sport because I found it to be very fascinating and it's a very thrilling you know thing to be able to see um, but I never went to races growing up and it wasn't until like 2014-15 that I went to my very first race in Monza and it just kind of took me by surprise I thought that it was one of the most thrilling experiences in my career to be able to attend such a show an event that is just, you know, the mass of people that like truly appreciate the sport and the fan base and to see the race cars and the teams and everything, it just gave me such an excitement. And I needed it at that time because I felt like, you know, traveling and doing all these things was amazing, but I needed something that was kind of very unique in terms of what I was capturing, the stories I was telling. And so I went with Heineken to a Formula One race and I had reached out to my friends over at Mercedes-Benz and they connected me with the AMG team. And within minutes, I was in the Mercedes garage with the race car drivers and the team. And I had the opportunity to meet uh, both Lewis and Valtteri at the time. And that was super interesting. And that's what really got it kind of propelling. And then I met the right people, became friends with the right uh, you know, people in the industry. And now I'm kind of in the sport and I love it. <laughs> What do you prepare before going into a Formula One race? When it comes to Formula One races, there's a lot of things that go through my mind because I can attend a race as an influencer, I can attend a race as a guest, I can attend a race with a team, I can attend a race with Formula One. So it depends on the purpose of my visitation in a sense. Um, if I'm going as an influencer or someone's creating content, then I have to really be careful with what I bring with me. At the end of the day, I want to blend in and I don't want to be perceived as an on-site photographer or video content creator. I want to kind of be able to still network, you know, be able to talk to the right people and be able to entertain both aspects of the business and also the content creation. So in my bag, I, I travel very light. I will bring one or two lenses at most. In the very beginning of my career in Formula One, I would always bring a 72200, but I started realizing that that made me stand out a little too much and people thought I was an on-ground photographer, uh, which is not the case. I'm there to kind of do different things. And so I started really trying to figure out what lens would work best. I then started using 85 millimeter and that gave me really cool shots. I had an awesome experience in uh, Abu Dhabi one time shooting with 85. Um, especially under a little bit of low light conditions, you get really nice portraits. And then I later on started to realize, okay, I need to even make it smaller, more compact, easier to carry around. If I'm in a meeting, if I'm meeting the right person, I don't want to be holding all this gear with me. So now I literally travel with my Canon R5 and a 35 millimeter. That's all I bring to a race. But this next race that I'm going to, I'll probably bring the 85 millimeter because I want to get some cool portraits. The problem with the 35 is your proximity to things kind of changes, right? So that's something that you have to think about when you're attending a race. But if you're there as just, you know, as a, in the fan zone or in the audiences, it, 7200, you definitely need something that, you know, is, is going to be giving you the focal length that you need to capture these vehicles. And they're moving fast. So you have to like prepare to hold that thing for a couple of hours. I bring outfits. I actually like try to stylize every single race I go to before I decide to go to a race. So I'll pick out my outfits for each day of the track. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'll have an outfit for each of those days. And the reason why is because you're gonna meet really cool people. I take photos with some really interesting people along, you know, on, on these trips and you want to look your best. You also want to give people a good sense of your style. You know, I want to be able to stand out as who I am as an artist and content creator, but also stylistically, I want to come up with a different approach. So wearing like, you know, team outfits and gats and stuff like that, I don't do that. But of course, I'd love to and 
Uh, maybe that's a later question of what which hat would I be wearing if I had to rock one. <laughs> yeah. But if someone had to shoot an event like these, especially for Formula One, where would be the best place to situate for good shots? Yeah, I mean, this is a very, very good question. And um, the last race I went to, which was in Montreal, I had the fun opportunity to be with Peter and Maddie uh, for certain periods of the day. And I was trying to really show them different angles and different locations that they can shoot cool content. So if you're in the fan zone, um, typically the grandstands is a great location to shoot because you're at the start of the race and also it's the longest stretch where the vehicles are going at most likely their high speed. So you have an opportunity to get some really nice movement shots, you have an opportunity to get the starting position shots or when people are about to you know do uh, pit walks and garage changes and so on and so forth. You have a lot more visibility of the action there but the first turn or the first bend is typically the, the most highly anticipated aspect of the race because that's what determines how the race is going to go and you've seen I'm, I'm sure if you're from a one race fan you've seen some of these crashes and accidents that happen during that first bet they're unreal and it's a great opportunity to capture moments that you know are thrilling but at the same time super dangerous and i have a friend that was an incredible photographer uh who just captures this brilliantly and you have to be positioned there waiting for the opportunity but for me because i'm attending these races a different aspect I will most likely be in the paddock club or the paddock area. So the paddock area is where the team's hospitalities are located. Um, and this is where you're generally going to see the race car drivers kind of going in and out of press rooms, going in and out of their hospitality. You have an opportunity to talk to them, take a picture with them. And then in the paddock club, that's more of the entertainment space. And you can get really nice visuals there of the racetrack itself from various different angles. The paddock club is typically the highest level of hospitality at Formula One. So you're getting the elevated experience in terms of capturing the racetrack. But I always sometimes just, you know, take off my badges and everything and I walk around the track itself and I try to find, you know, gaps. There's media gaps that are present at certain races where the fencing is kind of opened up for a camera. And obviously don't put your camera in it, but there's a, I mean, me and Maddie, we kind of did this when we were in Montreal. I found a gap and I took him there and we were able to get really, really close. We're talking about like, you know, six feet away from a, a, the race car as it's going 200 kilometers an hour. So you can get really nice detailed shots, motion shots and stuff like that. But that takes a little bit more maneuvering. So you really have to move around to get the best shots, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the whole point of it. And like in a typical racetrack day, I have this on my phone because I keep track of my steps. I'll do about 25,000 steps. Wow. Uh, and it's just me going up, down, side, like going every single place I can possibly get to so I can capture. And it's, you end up, you know, really getting a good feel for the, for the race, but you don't end up really seeing the race. That's the <laughs> only caveat. Um, if you're in my end, in my position, but of course, if you're there as a fan and you want to watch the race, you can fully see it. I, it's been a while since I was able to actually sit down and see a race. I remember one time I was sitting in the Ferrari hospitality and literally everyone's there watching the race and I'm just on my camera like editing as I can, like, because the thing is the sport is very fast, so you have to edit as fast as you can as well, so you can get the content out there. Would you rather shoot a lot or wait for the perfect shot? Oof. I think in certain things, certain sports, uh, waiting for the perfect shot might be a very, you know, a good idea. Um, but in Formula One, you kind of have to go with the quantity approach. The reason being is because you never know what you're going to capture. It's these vehicles are moving very, very fast. You, the race car drivers are, you know, in and out like this. They're running around. So your actual time and ability to capture something is very quick, it's rapid. It's not like you can like really work your magic and make time slower or slow down for you. So it is definitely about a quantity. And for me, I go in there, like I'm a machine. The moment I get to the track, I have my phone out, my camera out, I'm capturing every single detail I could possibly capture because I'm doing Instagram reels, Instagram stories. I'm recording a YouTube video and I'm shooting images and on top of that, I'm networking and shooting content for some of these people that I'm attending with. So there's a lot of things going on and by the end of the three days, I probably have like close to 2,000 photos in my archives. It's such a controllable shooting environment. How do you compose the best shots? Yeah, so, oh my God. <laughs> 
<laughs> Very difficult question to answer. Every race is different in terms of the time of day that is, you know, the race is happening. So you might get an evening race in Abu Dhabi, but you might get a morning or afternoon race in Montreal. And in Montreal, we experienced a lot of rain and forecasts are always crazy. Um, the idea is that you kind of have to be ready to move in and out of certain locations uh, in order to avoid certain things. So for example, if I'm, if it's daylight and I'm standing on the track trying to shoot into the garages, it's very hard to get a good shot of the vehicles. So I have to ask permission to be able to get in the garage and to probably get the nice lighting that I need in order to capture some of these visuals. Of course, this is an extreme case scenario where I have the ability to do this. Most people don't. So I, my thing is if you're in the grandstands or if you're in the fan zone, you have to walk the circuit. You have to start finding areas where there might be a little bit of shade or cover to help you really you know, create a, that dynamic image that you want. And also stylistically try different things, you know, try panning shots, try motion shots, try, you know, slow motion shots. If you're doing video, um, get a range of different contents so you can kind of pick and choose what you think is best. But you can't control the environment, sadly, that's the one thing. Luckily for me, I have different areas that can enter and exit and that gives me the flexibility to create the different type of content. My favorite place to be at a race is at the very end of the race, is the podium, when the race car drivers are, you know, the three that obviously uh, did the best are at the podium and there's a huge celebration. That's where you can get some really cool detailed shots of the audience and everything that's going on. And that's a little bit better because it happens later on in the day. Yeah. So the lighting is much, much better for sure. So you talked about a lot of networking while you're at the event, at the races. But what I kind of want to know is that how did you get into shooting Formula One? Or how does someone get into it basically? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean to get into shooting Formula One, uh, first and foremost you have to attend the races. So you're either attending, you know, as a guest uh, of Formula One, you're either attending as with a brand that's sponsoring a team or just a brand that just wants to, you know, take you to a race. Those are the one kind of aspect of it. Going there as a fan is, is another way. If you go there as a fan and you start to create content, you create a body of work and portfolio around different races that you've attended, you can start to utilize those content, you know, pitch them to brands, pitch them to, if you get the right emails for the right, you know, contacts in terms of the racing teams and stuff like that, you can truly show your craft. And I know so many photographers that work in Formula One who have done that, who just were big fans, loved the sport, had the right opportunities and were able to show their content to the right people and then build into it. For me, it's, it was a very unusual introductory to Formula One. I was very, very lucky the way I was introduced. And continuing forward, it's been a very interesting experience because I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I do in that space. There's so many different options and trying to navigate in that space as an artist is sometimes challenging because you're like, okay, what am I actually gonna do? Am I there with a team? Am I there with Formula One? Am I not there with Formula One? There's a whole uh, array of questions that need to be answered. But as I continue me moving along in this track, I find that the opportunity just to be at the races itself allows me to create amazing content that I truly enjoy sharing with the world. And through those perspectives, I'm able to get a lot more opportunities uh, kind of aligning up. So first thing is just attend the races create the content, build the body of, uh, of work that you need to illustrate and share with people. So what would you say to everyone who's hustling to shoot for the brand of their dreams? So outside of Formula One, yeah. oh man, uh, <laughs> uh, my advice is kind of always sugarcoat it because I think that there's a complexity that comes with answering questions like this because you, I don't want to scratch the surface of telling people what they should do. But I definitely think that like, to be able to work with brands that you truly feel like you have a connection with, you have to illustrate a level of uniqueness in your work that allows you to stand out amongst every single person else doing it. So when I go to these races as an example, I'm trying to create a body of work that is so different than everyone else's, which is why I did like a lot of crazy reels and you know, I'll try to capture different mov motions and, and movements and so on and so forth. Because at the end of the day, like. Everyone can take photos and everyone can create visuals, but how are you able to excel 
and stand out and be able to get those leads with the brands that you want to work with. It's by really creating a body of work that stands alone. And so over the years, it's been always my main goal is to establish a body and portfolio that I have of content that is unique to me. And if someone was scrolling through social media, they could automatically identify that this is my work and not someone else's. And for brands, the same thing. It's it's amazing. Sometimes I have conversations with um, certain clients and they're just like, Alan, we, the reason we want to work with you is because your content is so different. And that's what you should feel like if you're trying to really build this, this you know business for yourself. You should feel like every single piece that you create is unique and that it stands out and that it can make someone feel something interesting because they haven't seen it elsewhere. So building your own creative style essentially mm -hmm. is the key. The key to everything. Yeah, I mean, if everyone was doing the same thing, then who would be at the top of right. the game, right? And to be at the top, you really have to be excelling in your in your craft. So it's different than just saying that you're really good at creating content. Everyone's good at creating content. Right? So many of you on YouTube right now are brilliant. And I've seen so many, I see talent every single day when I'm on social media. But the difference is how much of that talent is unique content versus just, you know, recreated content that I've seen before. Similar to what people are doing on TikTok. It's everyone's doing the same videos on TikTok. There's not much uniqueness in the content. So what ends up happening is that it's just, you lose that that complexity and brands don't really, brands don't appreciate that. They want that uniqueness. They want you to be individually different and stand out. So Formula One, which is your, who do you root for? <laughs> the big question. Uh, I'm sure many of you already know, but I started off in Formula One as a major Mercedes AMG fan. Um, and I still am to this day. Of course, they've had their challenges this year, but I do still believe that you know, the team itself and the the amount that Mercedes has brought to the sport is truly elevated Formula One for me as an experience and for everyone around the world. You know, they have the team itself has won eight titles, Lewis has won seven. These are numbers that are just so profoundly incredible to be able to have experienced and I've seen Lewis win multiple races and it's such a thrilling experience. Of course, it's not my only favorite team. I have other teams that I also root for, and I think that there's other race car drivers that I really like. Ferrari being a team that I really appreciate. I love the way that they kind of go about elevating the sport itself and creating the content that they do and really showcasing the world of Ferrari to, to the world is, is such an important aspect to it. Uh, McLaren is doing a great job in terms of their social content that gets me super excited because I'm always like, oh wow, this is awesome. Red Bull's doing a great job as well with their entertainment and events and all these incredible activations that they have. But at the moment, it's definitely Mercedes and Ferrari for me, um, with Mercedes being the top, so. Gotta wear that that Mercedes cap one day at the racetrack, I think. <laughs> I'm actually curious, like, who's your favorite team? Can you guys write down in the comments who you guys are rooting for? I'd love to see kind of the composition of fans uh, of Formula One teams on, uh, on my YouTube. So let's see what's going on down there. How many races have you been to? Oh, man. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> And the thing is, I've been collecting these as I continue to go to every race. Um, I think at some point I'm going to have to stop collecting these because they're coming, they're starting to become a little too much to organize, but I've been to a lot of races. I can't tell you exactly how many because I forget. Perfect. I think I got all the questions and I think they will really, really benefit from all the insider kind of thing that you've shared with us. Yeah, man. Uh, thank you. I mean, thank you for making me do this. Uh, uh, no, I, I'm, I hope that this information is valuable for you guys. Obviously, I didn't get into so much detail because otherwise this would be an hour video. But I think that there's an opportunity for me to, you know, talk more about the sport, talk more about my experience working with brands. And I think that moving forward, that is kind of where I want to take the direction of my YouTube channel is I obviously work with really interesting companies and brands around the world. And in doing so, I've learned many little things that have helped elevate my business and get me to where I am. So this is information that I truly think would be valuable for you guys to hear. So stay tuned for a lot more content like this. Victor, thanks so much for the questions, man. Remember to like, subscribe and comment and I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.